it seems I need to make another video. This isn't in response to the last video, but it is in response to some more comments that I keep fucking getting on uh, Facebook, Twitter. Not necessarily on Twitter. Mostly, all of them are on Facebook. Um, and one person just decided to comment, and it really pissed me off because... I, I stated, as a future educator, I want to teach kids that they need to move forward, move forward in their lives with love, compassion for others, and a thirst for knowledge that will be unquenchable. That is what I want to teach. I want to teach for kids to embrace people who are different, not to question people who are different. Um, I want to teach them to seek answers on their own, have that thirst for knowledge that is unquenchable. That is something that was not taught to me in high school. I had to find it in college. Um, but this woman stated that as a future, as a current educator, that she did not want to teach kids these things and that she did not want to teach kids to pursue an easier life. Which I stated easier. I probably should have stated better instead of easier that I wanted my children to have an easier life than mine. Um, which, isn't that the goal of society? I, I'm sorry. What if I said better? A better life? Is that, is that, is that satisfy you? I don't know. Um, but I want my children to have a better life than mine. Easier? Maybe. But let them, we'll come, cross that bridge when we come to it. Because I don't have any children yet. Um, but then she stated as a current educator that she wants kids to learn um, from her, truth. It's like, no, you don't do that. You want to teach the thirst for knowledge. You want the children to go out and find the truth for themselves and be able to find actual facts for themselves. You want to teach how to research correctly and how to research well. That's what you want to be able to teach children. And you don't want to just learn facts, learn the truth from you. Because one day, you're going to be gone. And then what, the children, what are the children going to do then? They're going to be lost because the teacher isn't there to teach them what is right and what is wrong. Therefore, a lot, a lot of teachers kind of fall into this role because states have kind of pushed them towards just pushing for facts. Make the students learn facts. Make the students take tests that they test well in. And by doing that, you are making people reliant on the educator, on the teacher, on the leader, because the teacher is the leader of the classroom, you're making kids be reliant on the teacher to basically form their form the children's ideas in their brain instead of teaching them the thirst for their own knowledge and to f answer their own questions, asking questions and then finding good factual answers to their questions. I've done that multiple times, and it has changed my worldview multiple times over. Um, but you don't want to teach them facts, because then they become reliant on the leader of the classroom for facts. That's why when Trump comes along and says he has all the answers, he knows exactly what he's going to do, people already have it in their brains because they know, oh, he is the leader because he knows. He knows. That's why he was so popular initially, I believe, because he stated all of these things that he thought, thought that he knew about, but he was just playing on their fears, playing on their fears, because fear is an inherent brain chemical. <laughs> fear and anger are basically, I think they're, in, they're like right next to the brainstem. I can't remember what the part of the brain is called, but they're right next to the brainstem. So when that is released... That, that raw emotion of anger and fear is released. It is such a visceral reaction from the body. And that's why it is so palpable. That's why people get it. That's why so many people fell under Trump's spell. Because he, he triggered the fear response. He triggered the anger response. Which is why so many people fell underneath his spell, really. Um, because they saw him as the leader the leader, the right-wing demagogue, fascist leader, but still a leader. That's why I'm, I've been pushing 
to change the way we teach in the classroom instead of pushing for this facts, this whatever, just <laughs> this wholehearted effort to just teach facts isn't healthy. It is just not healthy. I didn't have a like a teacher who like passed the discussion onto the students until I entered college. Until then, it was just the teacher standing in the front of the classroom, lecturing, PowerPoints, what fucking have you. But it was always the teacher leading the discussion, instead of the students leading the discussion. And when I finally had a class where the students were leading the discussion, the professor, he, he made sure that we touched on the topics that he thought was most important. But for the most part, he kind of let us do our own thing. Like, he's talking about firebombing in Europe. Like, what are the positives? And some people were stating, like, well, there's not really a lot of positives, a lot of negatives, a positive for the Allies, because it makes it really easy to kind of go in and, like, uh, take over these areas, because now the, the, the manufacturing is gone. So it's a very one-sided thing. It's like, we had, like, this really in-depth discussion I remember that one about um, firebombing Germany in World War II. But that was like that for every single class. And every single class was a different topic. And that is what is important. Getting the kids, the learners in the, in the classroom, to be asking their own questions. Discussing amongst each other and finding their own answers. Either as a combined group or separately and then coming together later. Because this deliberation of finding my own facts, bringing them to the class, presenting them to the entire class, that is amazing. Because he would also make us do presentations, and then he would make us put in discussion questions at the very end. And by doing that, it would challenge our knowledge about what we just researched and what we just presented on, but it would also challenge the class's knowledge on what they knew and what they can contribute. Mostly making us, like, figure out, like, we are all kind of experts in different ways. Um, we all bring different things to the table. And no one is discredited in those types of classrooms. And I think that's what we need to push for moving forward, especially in high school. Elementary school, that's fine, because um, they're still very, very young children. And you still want to teach things like empathy things like love and compassion for others, especially when they're at a very young age. But there are easier ways to do that than through, like, a classroom question discussion setting. There are a lot easier ways to do that. Children respond much more to play than they do to classroom time, um, which is why whenever I think back to um, my elementary school days, I almost always remember recess gym. We don't really remember the day-to-day -day lectures of the classroom because we always remember the times we had fun and we were playing. We don't remember the classroom time. So I think we really need to look at the American education system and really overhaul it to where it focuses on brain development throughout, throughout the years. When they're really young, elementary school, focus on play. Focus on learning through interaction with others. Middle school, start the transition to more discussion-based questions. Because that's when a lot of, like, that's when puberty hits and the brain is really exploding. And the body is exploding with hormones and chemicals. Like, that's when you really need to hammer home the idea of asking hard questions and finding answers on your own using facts. Um, and then forming opinions from those facts. <laughs> um... Anyway, um, that just it just really pissed me off when she said that she wanted the kids to learn from her the truth, which is not how any educator should speak at all, because the, the children should learn, should be able to learn on their own at the end of the day. That's what we want. We don't want children and learners to be reliant on someone to tell us the truth. We want to be able, as educators, we want to be able to kind of pass on the facts the, the the thirst for learning and the ability to find good answers on your own and then move on and finding your and finding the children finding their own answers 
and having the educator's job just be done. Because we have, when we have a society of learners, then no one is ignorant and everyone is able to find facts on their own. They don't need the White House saying that there's widespread voter fraud when there is absolutely no evidence of any illegal voting or widespread voter fraud. There is no evidence of that. But that keeps getting brought up that there, there should be an investigation because there could be widespread voter fraud even though every single polling place that every single news outlet goes to asks, hey, is there voter fraud? Not one person has said, yes, there is voter fraud here. They say, no, there is absolutely no evidence for any voter fraud. And it, it, it that te teaching children your facts is dangerous because that creates an atmosphere that would allow someone like Trump to be able to claim the presidency and kind of trick way too many fucking people, but almost 70 million people, that what he says is truthful, even though it is 100% not truthful at all. Okay, I'm done because that really made me angry. Because... Because she's trying to come at me as, like, a current educator. You should learn from me. No. No. That's not how education should work. <sighs> anyway. I'm gonna go, because my voice hurts now. And, uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs>